Um, one, one of those things that really um, made me want to change the way that I thought was, um, well, D groups helped a lot. I never had a D group like I had at teen camp that really, um, we just got totally open, you know, and like transparency was never something that I've been able to do, you know. And this teen camp was so awesome because it's, there's been a change in our teen ministry to not give this safe kingdom kid answer, you know, and to really um, try hard to get to the heart of what um, God is telling us. And uh, one of those things that my counselor, uh, Gary, Ter- Gary Taylor, um, told me was uh, how God is our great reward. And um, so in Genesis 15, 1, it says, uh, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. And um, Abram goes on, and he doesn't even recognize that statement. He goes on and asks for um, descendants, you know, right away. And uh, then go, then God just tells him, um, um, he took him outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said, so shall your offspring be. Like, God just told him that your great reward is me, you know. And then he asked for something straight away, and God gave it to him. So, I mean, the way I want to change is that I'm thinking of God as my great reward, and that those blessings are so much better if I look at, if I think about God as, um, that's all I need, you know. And uh, that's just what stuck out to me the most. And uh, just be happy that you have teens that really want to change their lives here. Because, um... Our church is pretty awesome. Um, I'm Bryn. Uh, so it's amazing to me how God knows when you need to be transformed, even though you don't know it yourself. Um, this summer's been a, a big summer of changes for me. Um, I turned three spiritually. Um, I was able to go on Hope Youth Corps, and then a week after that, I got to go to teen camp and. It just amazed me the lessons that God had for me to really show me my own heart and what I needed to change. And one thing that impacted me the most at camp um, was not only that I learned that I'm wanted by God, um, but he wants me so much that he fights a spiritual battle for me every single day. Um, I went to a breakout class, and it was called The Ultimate Fighter. And Sometimes I feel like I'm not grateful enough to God or that I don't see it enough that God fights for me. He was even willing to give up his son for me. And one of the things was there's a spiritual battle going on around us every day. I mean, there's one right in front of us. We just can't see it. And you don't feel it or see it necessarily physically, but emotionally when you have to make a decision between God and Satan. And it just, it really impacted me to go to school and fight for God. And just be grateful for God fighting for me. And instead of stepping out in front of God and letting Satan hit me hard, to step behind God and fight with him. And so that was just one of the great things that God showed me um, out of many this summer. John chapter 11, I'm so proud of our teenagers. And they are young people, they're hopeful, but one of the things that always impresses me uh, when we go to camp is how radically and how deeply and sincerely kids can transform. And it convicts me as an older Christian as having faith older than many of them are in physical age that I'm much less quick to change. And that doesn't mean just repent. I mean, really embrace all of God's truth. And the number one thing that we talked about that I want to share just briefly here at communion is that you are loved. If any of you have been reading The Lazarus Life, a few of us have, you'll know these, these thoughts will hit you. But um, again, I, I wanted to communicate these to all. Human love can do this for a few, that is to love everybody. But only sacred love can love each one of us. Loving en masse is something that a benevolent dictator does for his people. Loving with distinction is something only God can do. And he uses a great example of his children. And I, it, it uh, hits me with my one of my children comes to me and says daddy do you love me and I say of course because I love all kids and kids are awesome and kids just have a great spirit and I would be lonely if it weren't for children and so yes I love you does that answer ring no they want to know I love you individually specifically 
But yet many of us look at God in the same way. We come to church and we hear that God loves you. And we say, God, do you love me? And you hear, I love everybody because I'm God. But until you can embrace that he loves you by name. He loves you specifically. Not because he has to. But because, as in the theme of teen camp, he wants to. You are wanted. He knows the very hairs on your head. And so there isn't just an en masse, although God does love everybody. He loves you specifically. The challenge is, will you accept it? Will you accept being acceptable? When John chapter 11, when in John chapter 11, Jesus calls Lazarus. In verse 1 it says, now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. This Mary, who brother Lazarus was uh, now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. You know the story. Jesus comes to them and uh, he waits before Lazarus dies. And then uh, a couple of days, Lord, don't, don't worry, he's already dead. No, he, that, that's fine. He's just asleep. He goes. He stands at the tomb and he calls Lazarus by name. Insert your name. Can you hear Jesus saying, not just, come, huddled masses, Statue of Liberty. No, come, John. Come, Lisa. Come, Ken. I want you. That idea, that understanding, it's a fact of God's specific and desire and earnest effort, as Brim was saying, fight to connect to you individually. And until you can embrace that, and many of us have been disciples for many years and have yet to scratch the surface of what it really means to be loved personally. And if you feel stuck or like you're in this spiritual rut or you can't seem to get over the hump, communion, the cross, has the power for that change, but only when your ears hear your own voice. Like my daughter's father, do you love me? Yes, I love you. And you. And I know you. And the time and the effort in the cross was for you. Let's take a moment to change and respond to that transformation. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for team camp. Thank you for pre-team camp. Thank you for great volunteers. Thank you for the people that reached out to us. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the effort, for the money, for the sacrifice, for, for the courage. All of it being used to help us become disciples. Father, I think all of us could share, if we've been Christians longer than a year, that it's taken even more energy to keep us saved than it sometimes it took to get us saved. And thank you beyond that that you are willing to fight with us and for us to the very end. And Father, we want to be able to stand before you and say, well done. To hear those words, Wade, well done, good and faithful servant. Debbie, well done, good and faithful servant. Insert name. Father, help us open our ears to hear our specific name and respond to your calling. We love you. Thank you for these elements that remind us of that love. In your son's name we pray. past the elements. We're going to sing a song familiar to many of us, but I want to specifically focus on the word I have decided. Sing with us if you'd like or not. That's fine. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. No 
turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, cause I've decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Amen. In a moment, we're going to hear a wonderful sermon by the man who never stops praying for the saints, John Lusk. Let's stand and sing one final song first. to understand what God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior. I take Him at His word and be. Christ died to save me, this I read, and in my heart I find a need for Him to be my Savior, that He would leave His place on high and come for sinful men to die. You count it strange, so once did I. 
before I knew my Savior. My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was, my God, He is, my God, He's always gonna be. My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was, my God, He is, my God, He's always gonna be. Yes, living, dying, let me free. My strength, my solace from this grave. That he who lives to be my king. Once died to be my savior. That he would leave his place on high. And come for sinful men to die. You counted strange, so what did I? Before I knew my Savior. My Savior loved, my Savior lived, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was, my God, He is, my God, He's always gone. 